Do you know that you can help feed children around this world by just donating an hour of your time in the next couple of weeks? It's serious. We'll tell you about it. And Donald Trump live. Let's get it started in here. Let's get it started in here. Let's get it started in here. Welcome to The View from a Pew, a conversation among Christians who are out to grow their faith by asking the simple questions, the tough questions, and the stuff you really wish your pastor would talk about. Come on now, let's reason together. It's your voice we want to hear. The phone lines are open, so join the conversation. Call 855-244-0077. That's 855-244-0077. Now, here's your host. J. Michael McCoy. All right, good afternoon. It is the 24th day of October in the Lord's year 2012. I'm J. Michael McCoy, and this is the Wednesday edition of The View from a Pew. We've got several things to cover today, including Meals from the Heartland. Uh, we've got a uh, packaging event coming up that we're going to ask for your help with. And uh, Ed Hall, who's the area coordinator for uh, Meals for the Heartland is here with us, and we're going to talk about that. Also, we are graced today with the uh, presence of none other than Chris Roloff. Haven't seen Chris in the studio for quite some time. Glad you're here, Chris. I remembered how to get here. I was uh, happy about that. You did. You didn't forget. And nope. Bob Montserrat, the cat in the hat, and I wish we could have a camera on Father Tattoo because he shaved his head. Not not down to the skin, but to like a marine-like nubble. Oh, it is not clean enough to be uh, considered marine-like. Well, I said marine-like. Yeah. I didn't say like a marine. I don't even like think they want me to associate with So why did you cut off all your hair? Uh, same reason I cut off all my beard. I got bored one day. Are, are you that reckless with personal hygiene? By cutting off my hair? <laughs> yes, <What>? sure. <laughs> Man. Why don't you just color it? Why don't you uh, make it like bright red like Bozo the Clown? Because even though I own the hair salon that could do that for me, uh, I believe it's not very masculine to color your hair. Okay. Didn't Paul shave his hair in the New Testament? Yeah, yeah I, I think go. Paul did. I was trying to be like Paul. Thank yeah. you. There, there you, you go. <laughs> That's you what go. I was thinking. Yeah, there you go. I was trying to be like Paul. <laughs> okay, keep trying. Um, we want to, uh, before, well, let's get to Ed for just a second, because he's going to be with us the whole hour, and we want to talk about uh, Meals from the Heartland. Ed, nice to see you. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. You're, you're great. You know who you look like? Ah, tell me. You look like Red Skelton. Is that a compliment? Absolutely. He Thank was a you. handsome man. But can't for those of you on watching online, can't you, don't you think there's a... No? Just me? Okay, never mind. All right, and Ed is the area coordinator, which you admit you made up that uh, uh, title. That, that's correct. That's the best I could do. Well, I think if we're going to make up titles, let's come up with Grand Poobah. Well, or some, you know, King. Uh, you can call me King if you want to. Okay. That's a good title. <laughs> King of Meals from the Heartland. And uh, there's a packaging event November 9th and 10th at the United Community Schools on Highway 30 between Boone and Ames. And tell me what a packaging event. I mean, I know what it is because I've been hanging around Meals from the Heartland since they started out. But for those folks who are just new, tell them what a packaging event is, Ed. What it is is people come together in 10 persons teams and they package a rice based product in uh, bags that weigh about 13.8 pounds uh it's actually four ingredients it's rice it's texturized vegetable uh, protein it's uh, vegetables dried vegetables for flavoring and, a, and then a vitamix dumped into a funnel and then at the bottom of the funnel there's a, a plastic bag and you catch that and then it's sealed and then those are packaged in like 33 pound boxes but those are sent around the world to the hungry and starving and uh it's actually a completely balanced diet it's balanced for protein it's just a great little product uh for the people who have nothing to eat and it was interesting we had uh what were those missionary names remember the, that couple we had in here that the day nelms. The, the nelms stephen nelms yeah stephen and his wife stephen Abby. nelms and his wife and they have they're in uh, Zambia. Zambia. And they have seen some of that food in Zambia from Meals from the Heartland. Yeah, that's correct. It goes around the world. Yeah. And it's really targeted to the hungry, to the starving. It's really targeted to kids. 
uh, to schools. Uh, there are kids that have nothing to eat, so they really don't want to go to school because they don't have energy. But if, if the food is in the schools, then kids come to the schools to get an education and they get something to eat also. Yep, that, that's great. It's kind of like when you build a, 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 you build a church, you build a well that brings fresh water, living water, and then you build a church right next to it. Exactly. And they associate the two. Yeah, exactly. That I can get water for nourishment here, and right next door I can get the living water from Jesus at the church. Yep. Yeah, that's cool. Double-barreled gun. All right, now, Chris, you're having uh, uh, a KTIA packing group? Yes, uh, we're going to have two teams. Uh, that's the plan. Uh, and I say we're going to have two, two teams because I'm speaking in faith. You know, one of the interesting things about uh, managing a radio station or running a radio station is there's not a whole lot of people that run the radio station. You know this, right. Mac. There's two of you. There's, there? there's two of us uh, there in Boone, myself and Ron, and that's it. And the two of us... We can we can volunteer our time and pack, but we thought, how cool would it be to invite all the listeners of 99.3 who I know want to be uh, supporting Meals from the Heartland, have them join our team. So we're going to have T-shirts made up, and we're going to have a big uh, team of folks come out and volunteer. T-shirts so, from Broken Arrow. That's right. Broken Arrow right here in Des Moines are yep. making our T-shirts for us. Um, and so we're taking uh, uh, volunteer signups right now. So if, if somebody wants to be on the KTIA packing team, they can call Ron at the station. He's there now. Uh, you can call him at 515-432-5014. Uh, and you can sign up right over the phone, and you can be a part of our uh, Meals from the Heartland packing team. Uh, 99.3 signed up to, to take two slots, two one-hour slots, uh, on Saturday, November 10th. Uh, we're going to be packing at 930 uh, for an hour, and then again at 10.30 for an hour on November 10th right there at United Community Schools in Boone. And if somebody wanted to do both hours? Uh, I was just talking with Ed about that. I, he, he says that people can do both hours if they want to. Yeah, exactly. Or you could expand it. Uh, you could have each team do two hours so you're there for four hours if you want to. Sure, sure. Well, and you know, and this is all up to the volunteers yeah. for us. You know, the neat that's the, the the fun and exciting thing about radio is we don't get to see all of our listeners. Mac, you know, you've been in radio longer mm -hmm. than I have. Uh, they're out there. Um, we know they came behind us. Uh, and when we did the fundraiser for Informed Choices, uh, opening up in Ames, which uh, by the way, we'll talk about them again uh, soon. They're actually having another fundraising event, okay. not on the radio, but uh, uh, they're in Ames uh, next month as well. But anyway, we saw just the tremendous tremendous giving spirit of the listeners of 99.3 that they really rallied behind this great uh, pro-life clinic that opened up at Ames. Um, and I, I'm really excited and expect them to do the same thing here where they're really going to rally behind Ed, Meals from the Heartland, and, and package some food. Uh, so we're just looking for folks to join our team. People can volunteer now. Yeah, now my family, uh, uh, my wife uh, believes that as a family we should donate our time to a worthwhile cause around the holidays. So I don't know for how many years, but my family will go down for an hour and pack food, uh, and it it really is easy. I mean, Ed described it perfectly. You got somebody that puts in a cup of this, somebody that puts in a cup of this. So there's there's four things, right? Exactly, four ingredients. And you put them into a funnel, which drops to a bag. You take the bag, you put it on a heat sealer, seal it, and then somebody puts it in the box. Yep, very simple. And yeah. it's, a, it's a barrel of fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Use, I don't, I don't, are you guys going to have, like, music or anything going on up there? Oh, yeah, exactly. We're going to have music going, and uh, it, it's a lot of fun because you see all the old people like us, and they're really jiving and bouncing to the beat. And, who, who you? Uh, where's us? He's talking uh, about me. Oh, yeah. you. Okay. My yeah. birthday's tomorrow. I'm going to be 35, so. <laughs> are you really? Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. You're like half a 70. Half a 70? Yeah, well, don't put it that way. That's kind of weird. Sure. How old are you? I'm half a 70. Wow. You're almost as old as Bob. Almost. Almost. I keep catch. I'm trying to catch up with him, though. Yeah, you, you won't. I may be the oldest in the room. I don't know. Um, you were born in '54. Two. Two. Fifty-two. When were you born? Forty-nine. Oh my gosh! He's See, Bob, you're the youngster in the room for once. Well, not exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ed's going to be with us uh, for a while today to talk more about this. Again, the number and it. There's no cost to you. It's just an hour. Bring your family. Uh, if you have a small group at church, what a great thing to do for the holidays on a Saturday. You know, you guys get together and have an early breakfast and then go down there. You go down there and then have a late lunch. It's a great event. And again, it's so easy. I, and I, I don't know what would be easier than packing food for Meals from the Heartland. I mean, you guys work all the bugs out of it. It's oh, just yeah. simple. 
all the preparation is done. Yeah. We, we spent months and months in planning and preparation and ordering ingredients and lining up trucks and all of that. We are planning on three semi loads of food to be loaded and hauled out of there on that Saturday the 10th. Wow. That's awesome. How many meals is that? Oh, that's about 865,000 meals. Okay, now let, let me just give you a comparison. 865,000 meals from the United Community School. Yes. In Boone. In, in between Boone B- and between Ames. Between Boone and Ames. Okay. And just to give you an idea, the first year we did this, because uh, originally this was a Lutheran Church of Hope. Yes, it was. And then we saw it, or they saw it as, um, I always say we because I'm a member, but that's all I am there. I'm nothing more than just a member. Um, but uh, we saw it as something that could become much bigger if it wasn't under the wing of the church. And so um, Al Lorenzen? No. Who's the guy that heads Meals from the Heartland? Dave Bradley is the executive director at this time. Yeah. and uh, But the first year that we did this, 204, maybe? Do you know? Well, I understand. I know you did it in 07. It came to Hy-Vee Hall in 08, I believe. And I think we did it for a couple of years before that with it, because we had a semi out in the parking lot of Hope. But anyway, the first year we did it, we did a million meals. Now, these guys in Boone and Ames are planning on doing almost a million meals in those two days. That's how this has grown. And I don't know how many millions of meals come out of Hy-Vee Hall. Well, I think it's 5.1 million came out just this year. Yeah. So it, it's an incredible event. You really don't – can I challenge you? You really don't have a good excuse. I mean, you can be wheelchair-bound, and, yeah. and, and you can do it. Sure. We've had people in wheelchairs – come to uh, to the packaging event and on the other end we, we've had little children that might be five or six years of oh, age yeah, yeah. Uh, stand on a chair beside dad and yeah. dad prompts them and shows them what to do yeah, it's, we, it's we, a great family event yeah so we had I, all our grandkids do it i yeah. need to interrupt here uh the uh the ten thirty slot may be filled already they've got nine people signed up oh is this from ron that's coming from ron okay so all right so then it that you said the nine thirty. Uh, 1030 slot. All right. So it says, tell Chris, we got a possible nine for 1030. So that slot may be filled. Well, nine plus you and your wife and two kids makes 13. I unfortunately am going to be at a presbytery. Oh, I'll, I'll get you an excuse, Junior. I'll write a little (laughs) note for you. But that's great. If more people want to sign up and come out at 930 on a Saturday, I mean, really, come on. That would be, that's a nice thing to do on a Saturday morning. 930 is not too early, but you can, you can call Ron at the station. The number is 515 432-5014 432-5014 to be a volunteer at the KTIA team. Again, you're going to get a cool t-shirt and uh, be a part of the radio ministry and what we're doing uh, to really help Meals from the Heartland and feed hungry people. So call Ron at 515-432-5014. I think maybe we should put my face on a t-shirt I like and it. say, this man is fat. He doesn't <laughs> need the food. Okay. <laughs> There you go. So, yeah. No. This I, is not who we're packing the meals for. Fatty yeah, Mac. Fatty Mac. I, I was, <laughs> and you know, and the girl, the girls at Broken Arrow would do it too. Yeah, you they know, would. You know they've got a sketch of your face <laughs> somewhere up at Broken yeah. Arrow, and they just put it on a shirt. They'd be glad to. I, I'm calling I'm calling Kathy. Yeah. I'm, Ed, I'm in the middle of a uh, – I got bad news from my cardiologist a couple months ago. So. Ah. I started on 10, 11, 12, so October 11th, 2012, and I'm going to November 12th, 2013, and I'm, I'm working out three days a week, and I'm changing my lifestyle so I can be around for my grandkids for a while. I'm so delighted you're doing that. Yeah, well, my cardiologist, she's an Indian woman, and she looked at me, and she said, you're going to pop. <laughs> So what does that mean? She said, you're just going to pop one day, and that's it. So anyway, all right, Ed is going to hang with us for a little bit today. When we come back, if you haven't heard the rumbling of the earth beneath you to this uh, this afternoon, Donald Trump may have done his best gig ever, his best public relations uh, event ever. This may top them all. Donald Trump has challenged the president to something very simple, very simple, and the president gets $5 million for his favorite charity. And knowing the humility that President Obama has, I imagine that favorite charity will be him. What did Donald Trump say? And how do you feel about it? That's coming up next. Live here on The Truth. Yep, The Truth. 99.3 KTIA Iowa, powered by webcast1live.com.
it's like they want to It's like they want to get hit. Need a body shop? I'm J. Michael McCoy, and about 20 years ago, I went to a used car salesman by the name of John Hewitt. He had a little shop over there on North 2nd Avenue called John's Auto Sales, and I bought a car. I found that experience to be one that I had never had before from a used car salesman. He was honest, he was dependable, he had integrity, and he did what he said he was going to do. Well, over the years, between my kids and grandkids, I purchased seven vehicles from John's Auto Sales. And last month, I asked him to be a sponsor. And he said not only would he like to be a sponsor, but he would offer a $100 tithe for every customer that came and bought a car from him directly to the church of your choice. I can tell you about their huge selection. I can tell you about their years of experience. I can tell you about their honest integrity. But all I really need to tell you is that I bought seven cars, and you can trust them. John's Auto Sales. 5435 2nd Avenue, Des Moines. You need a good ride when you hit the trail. Trust the man with the cars and he goes by the name of Big John. Big John. Big John. Ever feel like there's more to life? God offers more. Chat now with an online coach at groundwire.net. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Drug and alcohol. been told you're not a good enough Christian? Well, we have too. Join the conversation. Call 855-244-0077. Now here's your host, president of the Not A Good Enough Christian Club, J. Michael McCoy. All right, 21 after 3 on the 24th day of October in the Lord's year 2012. I'm J. Michael McCoy, and this is The View from a Pew, live on 99.3 The Truth, KTIA, and also powered by webcast1live.com. If you go to webcast. The word one, live.com, you'll see us. View from The view from a pew, the view from a pew. You can get it there, too. Um, Fallon Forum, Max World Live. You can see the visual of this show. And we don't, we don't try to act like a television show. We, we, we don't have that kind of technology. What we do have is the ability to bring you live, real-time color pictures with a cool background. And so we do that not because we think we're fancy, but because it's just one more added addition to this new realm of technology that we have available to us. All right, Ed Hall is our guest today. He is the uh, area coordinator for Meals from the Heartland for the Boone and Ames area. And we're looking for people to sign up to do a Meals from the Heartland packing event November 9th and 10th at the United Community School on Highway 30 between Boone and Ames. And the number to call is 515-532-5014. And that's KTIA in Boone. So if you call that number and talk to Ron, uh, you can get signed up for you, your family, your small group, whatever it is. Exactly. But uh, let me correct you on that number. It's 432. Oh, I said five. Yeah. Thank you. It's 432. 432. We don't want to miss anybody. If they want on board, we want them. Yeah. That's right. Absolutely. All right. And Ron's taking the calls now. And you will be part of a team of people that will feed. Are you ready? 865,000 people. Now, really? You don't think God doesn't want you to go? 
you and your family, you and your small group, you and some people from church, you and some people from work, you and some clients, you and some cousins, and spend an hour of your life to help feed 865,000 people. I know my family, we do this. It, it's fun. Now, is it a ball, a riot? No, but what it does for you in your heart is worth every minute because you know you're helping somebody. All right, let's switch to the presidential campaign here for just a second. First of all, uh, uh, Father Tattoo, who uh, is not going to vote for either Obama or Romney, and we won't get into that right now. We may get into that conversation later. He's just, and I told him that's a waste to vote, and it's a vote for Obama, but he won't change his mind. So he's decided he's going to vote for me. Mm -hmm. I know you wouldn't elect me dog catcher, but Dan's having fun. We know it's all fake. Dan's having fun putting together our campaign commercials, and this is the latest. What do we call this one? I don't know, but it's got a half million views on YouTube right now. Are you serious? No. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. I was like, this is awesome. I think it's hilarious. All right. So here, here's the newest commercial. And Dan did this whole thing. I mean, this is all Dan. I mean, Dan, whether you love Both it or you hate Pitt it. Romney and President Barack Obama have flip-flopped on almost every major issue. J. Michael McCoy doesn't even like flip-flops. In fact, he says they're garbage. Vote J. Michael McCoy and Tom Coates November 6th. And remember to vote early and vote often. I'm J. Michael McCoy, and I'm running for president, <laughs> and I approve this message. Paid for by Americans who want better choices and the I'm not voting for any of these clowns super PAC. <laughs> I tell you what, if you have not seen that, I'm sorry, if you've not seen the video, the first time I heard that was just on the radio, and it's great, funny, the flip-flop thing, but you have to find this on YouTube. Is it on Is it on your page? Is it on your Facebook page? The YouTube of this? It, it is on YouTube. If you look for a Rebels Cause Radio, you will see it's our most recently uploaded video. That is that is a hilarious video. Max face. He if you haven't seen, he throws away the flip flops. That's the best moment. I I'm losing it. And those here. are my flip. We bought those flip flops in like 19. Listen to this. 1990, when my wife and I went on our one and only Caribbean cruise because I hated it, <laughs> but I kept the flip flops. So those flip flops are like 22 years old. He really hates the flip flops. No, I. Yeah, I don't like flip-flops, and I don't like cruises. <laughs> Neither. That's All a right. new sound clip. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 1-855-244-0077. That's the number you can dial if you want to participate in the show. And if you go to uh, – you didn't – did you – Hmm. I did you share that with me? Is that on my Facebook yeah, page? Yeah, it's on your wall. Is it on my wall too? Okay. Yep. All right, so you can find that there. And it's just all in fun. I really don't want you to write my name in. I want you to vote for the He's person. Lying. I want you He's to vote. I want He's you. Lying. Can I please talk? I want you to vote for the person that you feel God wants to run this country. I want you to seek God's will and vote for the person. In this case, it would be a man. Well, I guess there may be other. Are there? Is there a woman candidate? I don't think there is. Vote for the person who you think God wants to run this country now god's going to make it happen either way but it's it's i'm sorry you may not like what i'm about to say but you have an obligation to vote <laughs> why do we have an obligation to vote mac because people uh, i'll tell you why junior okay because millions of people have died in uh -huh. this country over the last 250 years so you have one single right and that is the right of a democracy to vote and you don't think by not voting you're not exercising your right to that democracy no you're lazy and apathetic I, i'm lazy i'm creating anti-attack ads for you i'm clearly lazy that's why i'm not doing so that. i want you to vote for the individual that you feel god wants to be the president and if for some reason you can't vote for either mr romney or president obama then feel free to write in mccoy coats because we're just having fun with it all right, let's, uh, let's, let's look at the bomb that Donald Trump dropped today. Unbe only the Trumpster. Who else could do this? Where it would be half entertainment and half serious. Okay? I mean, a, a Hollywood, uh, you know, Kevin Costner could come out and do this, but that wouldn't have the same oomph. Um, uh, Newt Gingrich could come out and do this, but then it would all be just smeared in politics. So only the Trumpster 
with his hair could do what he's done. This is his video that he released on Facebook today. President Obama is the least transparent president in the history of this country. There's never been anything like it. We know very little about our president. I'm very honored to have gotten him to release his long form birth certificate or whatever it may be. Now, many, many people have questions and very serious questions. I have a deal for the president, a deal that I don't believe he can refuse, and I hope he doesn't. If Barack Obama opens up and gives his college records and applications, and if he gives his passport applications and records, I will give to a charity of his choice, Inner City Children in Chicago, American Cancer Society, AIDS Research, anything he wants, a check immediately for $5 million. The check will be given within one hour after he releases all of the records so stated. He'll be doing a great service for the country if he does this. If he releases these records, it will end the question and indeed the anger of many Americans. They'll know something about their president. Their president will become transparent like other presidents. So all he has to do to get $5 million for a charity or charities of his choice is get his colleges to immediately give his applications and records and also to release his passport records. When he does that, to my satisfaction, if it's complete, this check is delivered immediately. A lot of people will be very, very happy to see this happen. Frankly, it's a check that I very much want to write. I absolutely would be the most happy of all if I did, in fact, make this contribution through the president to these charities. One caveat, the records must be given by October 31st at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Mr. President, not only will I be happy and, by the way, totally satisfied, but the American people will be happy. And you know what? Those charities will be very, very happy. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay. Any thoughts on this from the panel? My my initial thoughts are that I don't think he's going to do it. And I don't think he's going to do it, not because he can't produce the records, but I just I don't think he's going to entertain the Trumpster. Okay. Yeah, that, Remember, that he would, did it once before. Did, did he, was he really swayed by Donald Trump with the birth certificate? Do you uh, think it was? Uh, he takes credit for it. That, that's, the, uh, that's all I know. Is Trump takes credit for it. I mean, honestly, if I was in Obama's, if I was in Obama's position, and I would imagine my college record and, the, and those kind of documents would not be difficult to come by, I imagine. I mean, I'm the president of the United States, for crying out loud. Do you think somebody could dig it up? Well, remember, he had them all sealed. He had all of his transcripts sealed when he ran for Congress and lost. Before, after he became a state senator in the state of Illinois, and before he ran for Congress and lost... He sealed all those records, which you can do, but a judge can unseal them. But it's highly unlikely that a judge is going to go against the president on something that isn't, you know, national attention or necessary. So he would need. So he would need a court order to open those. Uh, you would need a court order to open them. Obama needs nothing to open them. Oh, I see. In other okay. words, the judge isn't going to stop the president from opening his own records. Correct. And okay. a judge could step forward and open his own records. That would be. That'd be a big deal for that judge. That would uh, there's a half of this country would probably consider that overstepping the judge's bounds, and I would imagine his future was pretty much ruined as a judge or politician or whatever he wanted to be. But Trump would probably support him for the rest of his life. Yeah, that'd be that'd be his charity probably. That'd be the five million dollars. Right, right. But you know, I, that to me, if I was if I was in Obama's shoes, now I don't know. Has the did this just come out yesterday? When did he today. post this? This, this came, came out today. at noon today. I mean, five million dollars, and and I think it's it's fair to say I think Trump legitimately has the money. I mean, if I said that, I don't know that I could back that up. Right. But I think I think Trump could. Oh well, here, look, here. I mean, we'll all throw in five million dollars around the table if he does it too. 
I mean, we could jump on this bandwagon if we wanted to, because I agree with you. He's not going to do it. But if but if 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 Trump was serious and it was going to give Obama the five million dollars, my question then to myself, if I was Obama, if I was the president, why not? Why not? That's yeah. five million dollars. I mean, I could radically change my favorite charity, whatever it is, uh, for for a very 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 long time. Imagine what it would do for the the birthplace in Ames. Oh my gosh. I mean, we would. You know? I, if Brian Brian Mason uh, of and Form Choices is an avid listener of the View from a Pew Mac, and so if he's listening right now. Can you imagine? I mean, Brian yeah. would go through the roof, and he'll probably even put on chat. What would five million do? I, five million dollars would s- seal their vision for the state of Iowa. Yeah, uh, it could radically change an organization. Well, I, I doubt if Obama's going to name his favorite charity as one that saves babies. Yeah, but no, that's no, not he's not going to. Still, but, you know, you take a private school in Chicago. You yeah. take some children's thing in Chicago, $5 million is, I mean, that, that's a nest egg. Right. You know, that, that changes everything. All right, Bob, what do you think? Should Obama do it? Nah. Why? He's not going to do it, and I think I'm, I'm with Chris, that it's going to be a matter of uh, he's not going to give in to that. Not at this time. Not at this time, uh, just before the election. Ed, you got an opinion? I think he should, but I agree with Bob. I don't think he's going to. Okay. And he should give the money to Meals from the Heartland. Yeah. We'll there take you it. go. We'll take it. That's right. That, that How many how many millions of people would that feed? Oh. All right. We'll get Father Tattoo's opinion, which means about squat to me, but we'll get it next live <laughs> here on KTIA. Both Mitt Romney and President Barack Obama have flip-flopped on almost every major issue. J. Michael McCoy doesn't even like flip-flops. In fact, he says they're garbage. Vote J. Michael McCoy and Tom Coates November 6th, and remember to vote early and vote often. I'm J. Michael McCoy, and I'm running for president, and I approve this message. Paid for by Americans who want better choices and the I'm not voting for any of these clowns super PAC. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. It's like they want to get hit. Need a body shop? Minor Wreck Express saves you time and money. feel like there's more to life god offers more chat now with an online coach at groundwire.net from the remax real estate concept studios this is webcast one live drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a person's identity tearing away pieces of their life little by little until one day it seems like the hope of a happy future is gone and there's no chance of getting it back Here at St. Gregory Retreat Centers, we can assure you that there is hope. Our unique approach to recovery begins with the understanding that the dysfunction and damage caused by addiction can be overcome, not just dealt with. Don't let another day go by. Call St. Gregory today. President Obama is the least transparent president.
if you sit in the back pew or the front pew. It's your voice we want to hear. The phone lines are open, so call 855-244-0077. Now, here's J. Michael McCoy. 338, 22 before the top of the Salem Radio Network News, and then Pastor Michael Mudloff hosting True Blue here on KTIA as he continues his series on why voting. It's it's starring, Mac. It's not. He told me not to say that. He's starring. Okay, well, He's a superstar. Okay. Anyway, uh, Pastor Michael Mudloff, West Kirk Presbyterian Church, starring in True Blue, uh, which is heard from 4.03 to 4.30. And what did you say? It's a continuation of a series on voting? Yeah, the total series that we started uh, at the beginning of October, or we he started, um, the church did, was a... Uh, uh, the Christian's role in American politics. So we're going to go that the Christian's that series, role in American politics. Yeah. Okay. And it, it's been a lot of discussion on the, the role of the church, the role of civil government. Uh, scripturally, he's done a great job. Uh, I've learned a ton. And uh, at the end of this week, uh, he did three Sunday messages uh, four years ago on why we should vote. And this was four years ago when our choices were Obama and uh, McCain. And uh, I, I'm really looking forward to, to hearing his admonition to all of us to vote, uh, no matter no matter where we are. Yeah, because I don't think he's trying to steer you to who to vote. It's no. just that we have a yeah. Because 25 percent of all Christians vote, and that's it. He said he actually talked about that actually so far uh, I think already. That's just appalling. It really, and he made that point too. I think it was really funny. I think one of the days you had said that on the radio, and then he said that right after you that it really is shocking. Um, if, if Christians would get involved in the political oh, yeah. process, we could change this country. Yeah. I think the problem is, you know, I look at a guy like me, I'm, uh, like I said, I'm 35, I'll be 35 this week, and I've never really been involved in politics. I've been an evangelical Christian since 1996, uh, old, since I, well, which is when I turned 18. Uh, so I could be involved in the political process the entire time I've been a Christian, and I just haven't been. Do you vote? I do, um, but you know, I, I, I shared this with Ron. This is just my opinion. I think the vote at the end is kind of uh, it's the least in, it's, you can do. It is the absolute least you can do, and I think the real change comes not. Why not, are you looking at me, Mac? Because it's the least you can do. I did the most I could do. I signed up to be a delegate, and I you didn't worked, go. I didn't go to the state <laughs> because I went to the county and watched. Honey, the game I show. called you on your birthday to wish you happy birthday, but you didn't answer. So I did the least I could do. No, I went to the county delegation. I, as a delegate, I went to the county convention, and it was. It was a waste of my time. Ah, yeah, right. Well, okay, so well, you did the least you could do. No, most people don't do that. Most people don't caucus. Most people don't go go as a delegate. That is not the least I could do. Well, the, the, the thing that, and I've said this for years, and I this comes from the bottom of my itty-bitty little fat heart. <laughs> Which is growing thinner every day. Thank you. You have to vote. I mean, I, I don't know how. How? Call me and tell me how you can justify not voting. Because there's nobody worth voting for, man. Did I hear the phone ring? No, but you don't need somebody to call you. I'm right here. You want me to call you on the phone? So tell me why you shouldn't vote. I'm not saying that people shouldn't. I'm saying you should vote your conscience. And my conscience is that one man is a cult leader and the other man is a, is not a Christian. And neither one of these people, even in the last debate, have a hair's bit of difference between them. So I can't vote for either. If, if Barack Obama was the only person on the ballot, if it was Barack Obama A or Barack Obama B, if they were literally the same person would you vote mac would you vote for b well, if i could if but, you had a choice between barack obama a or barack obama b and the only difference was the a and the b well that's a, that's an unrealistic question because no, that couldn't exactly happen the, it, it couldn't happen would you vote for him anyway i would vote for the person who i thought could win that matched my world my biblical world view in every other ele election i have that option in this election who did you vote for last time who did i vote for last time i voted for mccain okay i've always voted republican <sighs> except this time except i'm not i'm just not voting i'm you know this is part of being a this is part of what mitt romney doesn't get is he can't get his base because his base doesn't like him you know and i, uh, I, I, I shame on mitt romney though i gotta say this shame on mitt romney because i just don't think that he has uh, has appealed to me enough to be completely honest i don't know that he appealed to the evangelical christians quite enough i would say he ignored us well, and i think it was which now now you have to deal with this and this is really was surprising huckabee's come out um in support of mitt romney which surprised me but um 
you know, Huckabee kind of made the comment when he did his whole Chick Fil A thing um, that this would have been, or no, no, that was Steve. I don't know. Somebody said that it was really surprising that Mitt Romney didn't get involved in behind this Chick Fil A thing. Right. When here he was, a prime opportunity uh, for him to lock arms, join forces with the evangelical Christians, and he didn't do it. And so, I, I don't know why. What I hear you saying is that Mitt Romney is genuine. That he doesn't go lock his, using your term, yeah. lock his arms for political gain. That he's genuine. Except he, that he hasn't been consistent doing that. Yeah. I, well, I don't know. I mean, You're the, reading Democratic... No, I'm reading his own stuff, Mac. He said, hey, look, I'm pro, pro, pro-life. And then he goes to Dwayne Register and says, look, we don't have anything pro-life in our bill, and we're not going to put anything there. It's, it's problematic. It just is. You know what, do you know what Mitt Romney's position on abortion is? I'm sure he's personally against abortion. But do you know what he is? You know what but his I'm poli- universally against it. Do you know what his policy is? No. Well, enlighten me. Okay. It's only in the case of rape, incest, and the uh, health of the mother. Okay. And I'm, I'm universally pro-life. That means none of those count. To okay. Me. And I understand that. Okay. But you also must understand that what you want will never happen. And what It won't happen. It's like the third party thing. It's this. It won't happen. First of all, you can't say won't because God can do whatever he pleases. Oh. And second of all, it's like the third party thing. Oh, if you vote for a third party, you raise your vote. It'll never happen. It never has. The reason it never happens is because people get up on their microphones. Oh, it'll never happen. And then idiots buy it. And I'm just not that idiot anymore. Anyway. It's, um, a, it's, a, very, it's a very interesting conversation. I'm still, I believe it or not, I've, I've, gone, I've gone both ways. I don't know that I'm going to, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do frankly, to be honest with you. It's, I, I, I am the guy, I'm the scary guy that's still trying to figure this out, and we're like, how many couple of days away, you know? It's 14, like playing chicken, 13. isn't it, Chris? Like, you're like, you want to vote with your conscience, but you're like, man, mm-hmm. this is scary. But just realize, when that microphone turns on November 7th, and for the next four years, if Barack Obama's our president, you don't get to complain. No, I certainly do. No, you, you know don't. You didn't vote. But you know what? When my you didn't vote, you don't get a voice. Oh my gosh, that is such a why? Why? Because because I chose not to participate in either evil. I don't get a voice. Either evil. <laughs> All right. You act like it's not evil, Mac. They deny the very existence of our God. It's evil. Who did? The Democrats? No. Well, yeah, they did that too, but so do the Mormons. They, 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 they make up their own God. Okay. They're not talking about Allahim. They're talking about something else. Okay. All right. And how many Mormon church services have you been to? I've done enough research on okay. them, and I've so been you've to just, three. So like you and Bradshaw just go to the internet, and that's where you get no, your information. No, I've been to three, and I've spent two weeks talking to Mormon missionaries, and I understand what they believe, and I own a book of Mormon. Okay. I don't know how much more you want me to do on and this. And so why does that disqualify him for president? It doesn't. Okay. My, my Thank problem you. is he's not consistent with any other values of mine. Okay. So he's not a Christian. And he's Obama not, is. You, you know your slogan, Christian, consistent, and American? Yes. He, I, the only thing I'll give him out of all of those is he's maybe American. But then again, he dra- dodged the draft and went to France on a mission. Uh, mi- but see, now there you go. You're reading Democratic <laughs> no, talking I'm points. reading He did not dodge the draft. He went to France. He, he took a religious exemption and went to France. Which is legal. It is legal, but it's still, that's, an, that's not what... Oh, I'm it, sorry. It, After Mac, 9-11, you joined the Army, right? You know what? I you tried. had no children. You could have joined. You know what, Mac? Pot uh, calling the kettle black. I, absolutely, and I okay. hate that I didn't, Mac. Okay. And that's the difference between me and this guy. I'm just telling you. No, it's fine. Hypocrisy. It's I'm not hypocrisy. saying I'm not a hypocr- hypocrite. I'm also not the one running for president like he is. All right. Ed Hall is our guest. Did you forget that, Ed, that you were our guest? <laughs> no, I'm really enjoying all of this. <laughs> Aren't they great? I love this. You know, it's been a long time since I've gotten to be in the room, and you guys are just as fun in person as you are on the radio. Well, we just have to find something else because every day Dan just looks a little dumber. Well, It's the- like dumb and dumber, and he's now the dumbest. You know, we've got a couple of weeks left, and then y'all come something that you guys can bicker right, unless about. Unless Obama's reelected, then he has to keep his mouth quiet. Hey, then we could actually preach the gospel. That'd be crazy. <laughs> All right. Um, Ed Hall, the area coordinator for Meals from the Heartland. He's in the studio. Have we got enough people for both hours yet? Uh, I don't believe so. So if you want to join the KTIA uh, team, uh, we are uh, putting a team together to pack uh, meals for Meals from the Heartland. Call the station at 515-432-5014. Okay, we're coming back live here on The View from a Pew. Powered by webcast1live.com, this is KTIA Iowa. 
the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios. This is Webcast One Live. Drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a person's identity, tearing away pieces of their life little by little until one day it seems like the hope of a happy future is gone and there's no chance of getting it back. Here at St. Gregory Retreat Centers, we can assure you that there is hope. Our unique approach to recovery begins with the understanding that the dysfunction and damage caused by addiction can be overcome, not just dealt with. Don't let another day go by. Call St. Gregory today. It's like they want to get hit. Need a body shop? Minor Wreck Express saves you time and money. If Tom Coates from Consumer Credit of America was your personal webmaster, Tom would filter out all bad debt emails. If Tom was your mailman, you'd never get any debt reduction junk mail. If Tom Coates was a lineman, he'd block any phone calls offering to reduce your credit card debt. Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America, and we're still your best choice for credit counseling. We're local, we're accountable, and we can do more. You make the call when the time's right for you. When it comes to competition, there really is none for Consumer Credit of America. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. now let's reason together the phone lines are open and it's your voice we want to hear so call 855-244-0077 now here's j michael mccoy 10 before the top and salem radio network news and then followed by true blue hosted by pastor michael mudloff uh, he is going to be talking about how no no not how christians should vote uh, yeah, at the end of the week, he'll start a series on why vote. But his why total vote? series is uh, right now the Christian's role in American politics. So it, he answers a lot of these same questions um, straight from Scripture. You know, helps us define what the role of the civil government is, what the role of the church is, and 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 uh, our differing roles. Because we do, you know, we do have a differing role. And I think that's one of the things that's really interesting about this whole debate, Mac, is that oftentimes Christians, um, myself included. I see uh, the role of the church and the state actually coming together, believe it or not, mm-hmm. in ways that, that are really contrary to my own, my own belief and what, really what I want. You know, I think the hope and the change and, and uh, the salvation that we want for America, the hope we want for America, is really only found in Jesus Christ. And, um, and I say that because uh, I believe it, and it is true, but that's the role, that's, our, that's the church's job. The church's job is to be the voice of Christ, to be the body of Christ in the United States. And it doesn't matter if uh, Barack Obama is president. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, if Mitt Romney is president. It doesn't matter who's president. Uh, the church's role is to be the hope, salvation, comfort, and bring the kingdom of God uh, here to America. And, and no president is going to do that. So I know that myself, as an evangelical Christian, I often look at the guy running for president wanting him to be that guy and and he's not going to be that guy uh and that's a misplaced hope uh even if we vote for mitt romney and you think that mitt romney is the right guy to vote for that's great i think voting for mitt romney is is fine I, there's nothing wrong with voting for mitt romney i i have a good friend in david shedlock who who would firmly mm-hmm. disagree with me but um i think which that's he'll fine. Be on tomorrow which which i think is fine but we have to remember and shedlock would agree with me in this is that the guy who runs this country is the guy who needs to run this country well. Uh, I think we would all agree. I don't think Obama has done a good job running the country, right. frankly. I, I don't, but uh, so I would agree with you there. But so I think that's to me, and I've I, I've thought a lot about this in the last several weeks, and that's well, I don't know. I just decided to soapbox. I guess we came back from the thing, but um, we do. We 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 cross those roles as Christians. We want 
America to be the church, and it's not. It's a secular, civil institution, and it's going to be what it's going to be. Um, we can't, you know, you hear people say all the time, Mac, you can't legislate morality. It's true. You can't. Right. If we outlawed abortion and abortion, all forms of abortion in any way were completely illegal, it doesn't mean that they're going to stop happening. Right. Uh, they might be more difficult. We may have less of them, but that doesn't mean they're going to stop happening. Stop happening. Even if we were to jail people for uh, stealing or killing, those things still happen. People still steal cars. They still rob banks. I mean, we just right. had a bank robbery here in Des Moines not too long ago. Uh, so just because we pass a law doesn't mean that people's hearts are going to change. The only thing that's going to change the country uh, is the good news of Jesus Christ. So as Christians, I think we, we, we combine those two. We want to pass laws that will force others to be Christians, and that's not what's going to happen. Uh, in fact, that's the whole point of the First Amendment is the separation of church and state, as we call it, or that government that the that the Congress shall pass no uh, law, or they, they they will not establish the church, is because the civil role or the civil government's role is to enforce the laws. It's the Church of Jesus Christ that is to save the souls. If that makes any sense, it, it makes a lot of sense. But I think the battle lines have been drawn between jesus and the accuser okay and those people that want to um misconstrue separation of church and state remember it's not from it's of right right and our forefathers intended because they ran from tyranny when their government was telling them what religion they had to be right it's freedom of religion right and the Which accuser's is army is misreading as he always does, he gets it wrong just enough for God to stomp on him, misreading the tolerance level of Christians. Because a lot of Christians are just about to the end of their tolerance when it comes to removing God from society. Yeah, I, I can see that. At some point, Christians, even the meek and the mild ones, even the Bob uh, Montserrat's of the world is going to put his foot down and said, what do you mean I can't? Now, hold on. Now, that's against my biblical worldview and i'm not going to stand for that and the accuser is going to push it that far and that's when christ will come in and win can i can i stop you for a second mac though no i think you're making a good uh, hang, uh, but i think mac you're making a, a lot of good points but go I, ahead, I, 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 he's absolutely right except that i reached that tolerance my last election i'm past that tolerance now which is why I'm willing not to vote for either, because I don't think electing somebody that doesn't believe in my God is beneficial to that cause, Mac. I love the, I love what you just said there. Uh, we Christians will quit being meek and mild, and they'll stand up and say no. And that's what I'm doing, and I'm getting criticized by other Christians for being like, look, I'm, I'm there. I'm there, brother. I think it's horrible. I don't want my God replaced with any other God because he cannot be replaced with any other God. And I'm going to stand up now. And if people don't stand up with me, they'll stand up with me next time. But that's fine. I'm and, not judging people for and, not standing up. And what if there isn't a next time? What? How, how is Mitt Romney, who doesn't believe in our religion, Mac, Mac they're not Christians. Okay, I don't want to. I don't want to. I'm, that's, I'm not calling them anything other than they're not Christians. Okay. It's not a Christian religion. I understand. And there's Methodists that don't think Lutherans are. Well, but the, and there's, there's Catholics a big who don't think Episcopalians are. Methodists no, and Lutherans. No, your bigotry stays within bigotry. It's no, it bigotry. does. It's not bigotry, Mac. They believe Jesus and the devil are brothers. They believe God is just like you, except that he got to the highest level okay. of heaven. I that he understand. is not the Alpha and the Omega. No, you apparently don't. I understand that you are misunderstood about I'm the not Mormon misunderstood church. this is what okay. they believe I know you've read you've read the democratic talking no points. I've read you've the Mormon talking well. points I know you've done well oh my gosh well Ed do you have fun this is a barrel of fun isn't it though it's a good time you're welcome anytime why thanks it's uh, November 9th and 10th the uh, meals for the heartland food packing event at the United Community School on Highway 30 between Boone and Ames, I need you to call the radio station if you would please. Your small group, your family, your Bible study, just some folks from work. We need a few more people to pack food and try to feed 865,000 people. 515-432-5014. Uh, 515-432-5014. 5014, the voice that answers will be Ron, good man, and tell him you want to get signed up on the KTIA team. Uh, not that this matters to you, but you'll get a free t shirt so you can have that for the rest of your days. And most importantly, you'll help feed 865,000 people. And that's amazing. 
That's just to me that because I remember the first one we did. And what'd you say? Somebody came on and said it was 07. Yeah, yeah. We, Ed was saying 07. Yeah. We, we fed a million people. Yeah, that's amazing. And now, what'd you say? Five point. 5.1 million, but remember, last January, the 20 millionth meal was yeah. taken to South Africa, and it was served in Jim Blessman's ministry in South Africa, 20 million. That's awesome. All right, Ed, thanks for being here. We'll see you next time. I'm J. Michael McCoy. If I haven't told you lately, thanks for listening. I love this job. Couldn't do it without you. Right here on The Truth, 99.3 KTIA, Iowa, powered by webcast1live.com. Both Mitt Romney and President Barack Obama have flip-flopped on almost every major issue. J. Michael McCoy doesn't even like flip-flops. In fact, he says they're garbage. Vote J. Michael McCoy and Tom Coates November 6th. And remember to vote early and vote often. I'm J. Michael McCoy.